Welcome. This is item number 27 for the release 2014, spring 2014, I should say, Tennessee end of course test for Algebra 1. The question says campsites for up to four people can be rented at Roan Mountain State Park from April 1st through October 31st. So they went local on you or, you know, at least statewide and they used local references. The table shows the relationship between the number of, between C, the number of, number of campsites rented, and D, the total amount of money in dollars collected for these rentals. So we need to find an equation that represents this relationship. The first thing we need to do is look at the differences. And unfortunately, we're going to have to do a little bit of uh, extra work from most cases where the number of campsites rented would be like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's not what's happening here. So we have to make a minor adjustment, not a serious one. It's just a minor rate of change thing. So I need to find out what the differences are here. 125 minus 50, or minus, yeah, minus 50, 75. I was thinking something about divide, but that's later. Uh, 5 minus 2 is 3. So to find the total rate of change, I need to do 75 divided by 3, which is, of course, 25. I'll do the same thing here. It's 3 again on this side. And uh, incidentally enough, it's 75 here as well. So 75 divided by 3 gives you 25. 250 divided by 200. Not divided, subtract. Sheesh. I don't know why I keep saying the wrong thing today. This is really plus 75 because it's going up. And then this is only 2. Uh oh, does that change anything? No, it doesn't. And then here, 50 and 2 as well. So they're trying to be a little bit tricky here and make you jump on the fact that it's 75 and then start looking for 75. See how this has 75 in it? So does this. Tricky. But don't fall for it. They're just being ridiculous. Um, so from here, this would be the part that in, invokes change. For each one, because when you divide it, 75 becomes 25 and 3 becomes 1. Um, the Each one campsite you rent, it's 25. That's the part that's changing. You make more money for more campsites being rented. So I'm going to put that 25 with the variable. So when you're working these, you need to think, is it dependent on something else for that number to go up? Like if you don't rent any campsites, probably not going to make any more money. Uh, so I need to work with the idea that, okay, it's 25 times the number of campsites. Now, that leaves me with two options, this one or this one. Now, it might be, I don't know why, it could possibly be tempting to jump on the 75, probably because you saw 75 here and then you have 25. But what I need to do is figure out the plus part that usually goes with it. That would be the part where you start out. That's like, okay, what if you didn't sell any campsites? In the real world, you wouldn't make any money. And in the math world, you wouldn't make any money either because the number of, uh, you'd only earn $50. I feel like I can erase this stuff for now that you get the 25C part. Um, not that you didn't get it before, but at least the explanation part's over. So when I had two, I had $50, but I know that this has gone up, you know, two campsites, so plus two, but it means it goes 25 up for each one that would go up. So if I want to know, okay, which three, I would do plus 25 and say, okay, well, three campsites is 75, that type of thing. But if I was going down, I need to get back, well, what happens if you don't sell any campsites? Well, you would lose 25 to get down to one, and then you'd be down to 25, and then you'd lose 25 again to get down to zero, so you'd have no money. So you'd be plus zero here. You don't start out with anything. It wouldn't make any sense for you to have profit if you're not um, putting anything into it. This is not something where you have a, a buildup of money that we know about. I mean, they probably do, but not in this scenario. So I can be pretty confident in saying that, yeah, the number of campsites, the amount of money that I collect based on the number of campsites is $25 per campsite. And that's it. So a couple tricky things about this one that made it harder than it really should have been or, you know, needed to be, I guess. It's easy to miss is really what it is. If you take the time to do it, it's not. Once again, my story of writing things out a little bit more to get the right answer pays off here. If the differences on this side are one, which they usually are in these tests, then you could just look at the differences over here. If they're not, you need to do a rate of change. So you need to do 75 and then divide by 3 because it's like a slope formula, whereas this is the y over the x and the slope formula is this. 
In fact, if you wanted to, you could do 125 minus 50 over 5 minus 2. It'll get you the same place. And you'd just do 200 minus 125 over you know, 8 minus 5, that kind of thing. It'll give you a general idea of what the change is. Once you find your change, put that with the variable and then kind of figure out what the zero starting off point is. You may have to rock the pattern back if it's linear like this one uh, to figure out you know, how much you start out with. And in this case, you didn't start out with anything. So just adjust from there. And that's it.